By the way, that concert, BMS, was rescheduled for Alabama. But anyway, Alabama got six votes. Nobody else got any first place votes. So Alabama number one, coaches poll preseason, put out by Amway. Does that mean that once the coach gets fired, he's going to come to your house and try to sell you something? I mean, the Amway coaches poll, is that the retirement plan? I, 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 just asking. Number three is Georgia. Number four is Oklahoma. Number five is Ohio State. Number six, with have you seen their locker rooms? Louisiana State. Number seven is Michigan. I am seeing a lot of people thinking that Michigan's going to make the college football playoff this year. Number eight, bad news for Tennessee fans, Florida. Florida. Our women are the fairest. Our men are the squarest. Notre Dame. Number nine, they were in a college football playoff last year. They shouldn't have been, all the SEC fans said, after they lost to Clemson 20-3. And then when Alabama lost to Clemson by one more point in the title game, seemed like Notre Dame should have been there after all, which I think they should have. Texas Longhorns, number 10, followed by Texas A&M, number 11. This is the coaches' poll, folks, preseason, college football. Washington. They're in the, the Huskies coming in at number 12. Oregon, a couple of Pac-12 schools, number 13. Uh, the Knitters, Penn State, number 14. Utah Utes, Pac-12s really helped them out, huh? They're number 15. Utah is a very underrated athletic program, by the way. I mean, you don't really think of, the, you know, and it's like they sort of slipped through, but... Look at how many times they made the NCAA tournament. More than 30 in their history. I mean, they played for the... And Utah, you know, anyway... The Plainsmen, Auburn, number 16. There's a tie for number 17 between Wisconsin and Central Florida. Iowa is number 19. Michigan State is number 20. Washington State, Mike Leach. I've got a Mike Leach story for you here regarding the Tennessee Volunteers. They're number 21, followed by Syracuse, which is the favorite in the ACC Coastal. Stanford, which is one of the more winning programs in this decade, at number 23. Iowa State at number 24, and remember I told you these guys could be ranked this year, and they are in the preseason poll, the Northwestern Wildcats at number 25. Who just missed it? Nebraska. Others receiving votes. Uh, in order, should I go number 20? I think I will, even though this isn't official, but I'll just give it to you this way. Number 27, Boise State. Number 28, Mississippi State. Who's on Tennessee schedule and Neyland Stadium. Uh, so that would mean that number 29 is Miami. Number 30, Army, with all the local players on the team. Army is supposed to be... Uh-oh, wait a minute. Kentucky? 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 Kentucky is suddenly... And the others receiving votes, they'd be 31st. And somehow they beat out Virginia Tech. Be number 32. A lot of people not excited about Virginia Tech. TCU would be 33. Southern California, 34. If we were going this with the others receiving votes, you know, that sort of thing. Utah State, the Aggies. There you go. They would be... I see this is in the others receiving votes, and I know that this will get all lost, but here we go. I want to give you where they were. Utah State actually tied up the Fresno State Bulldogs out of the, uh, the Mountain West, I believe. So let's see here. Nebraska, 26. Boise State, number 27. Mississippi State, 28. Miami, 29. Uh, Army, 30. Kentucky, 31. Uh, Virginia Tech, unoffici unofficially, 32. Uh, TCU, the way Bilson is reading it off, 33. Not really, but there are any others receiving votes. But so Southern California, 34. So Utah State and Fresno State would then tie for 35, making the Virginia Wahoos, number 37. Not 36 of 35 ties. 38 would be Cincinnati, the Bearcats. 39 would be West Virginia, by God. Memphis would be number 40. Oklahoma State would be 41. South Carolina would be number 42. NC State would be number 43. Duke would be 44. A lot of respect for David Cutcliffe there. Boston College, they'd be 45. Florida State, they actually, Boston College got more votes than Florida State. Think about that. Florida State would be tied with Baylor and Appalachian State for 46. They all got four votes. Okay? Boy, Florida State's falling. Florida State, Baylor, and Appalachian State, so that would mean that coming in tied for 49th would be North Texas and Houston, behind Dana Holgerson. By the way, Drew Rice, head coach at uh, the... Uh, 
head coach at Unicoi County told me, he's got a friend who's on the Houston staff, and he told me that the feeling with Dana Holgerson is that he just thought that Houston was so, such a football hotbed, that he thought that even out of the Power Five, better chance to win at Houston than he did at West Virginia movie. And he won at West Virginia. Tied for 51 or thereabouts would be UCLA, Temple, and Arizona State. They all got two votes. That means it tied for 53. Somebody voted these guys number 25. All of these. One lonely vote. Give you them first the schools that begin with M. Minnesota and Mississippi. The Troy Trojans, who actually beat ETSU one year before. Brandon Walker, the new Hall of Famer, and the ETSU Hall of Fame class joined the team. Troy would also get got one vote, along with the Tennessee Volunteers. Yes, they got one lonely vote. Now, here's what this shows me. One, uh, Clemson consensus picked to win the national championship again. Followed by, you know, the same old, same old Alabama. I wonder, you know, just like recruiting rankings, how much is the name of the program? Of course, recruiting rankings, here's the deal. I mean, recruiting rankings, they got to sell subscriptions to diehard college football fans. Diehard college football fans of, say, Penn State or Tennessee or Michigan or Clemson and Alabama, they don't want to hear that their team's going to lose. So as a result, you generally, oh, you know, there is a bit of a bias of, oh, that school is after him. He must be good. And also, there's a bit of a bias of putting those, uh, you know, glamour teams up at the top, Southern California, let's say. I mean, you would really have to bring in much superior talent if you're Arizona to be ranked ahead of Southern California. Don't let anybody tell you any differently. Trust me. I've written for Rivals, and I've written for Scout, and I've written for 24-7. I know how the ball game works. So that's one of the reasons I say those recruiting rankings don't mean much. But the other thing that I notice about this is that, according to the coaches, they just picked Tennessee to finish sixth in the SEC East. I mean, if you go by the votes received, it would be Georgia, Florida. Now, Missouri cannot get any votes in the coaches' poll because right now they're on probation. If it's appealed, which it may be this month, and I wouldn't bet against it, but we'll see. They got a postseason ban, but it may be lifted. Anyway, Missouri would be your consensus three. But they've got Kentucky four, most prognosticators I've seen about them six. South Carolina, most prognosticators, including Phil Steele, have them at four. And the voters would therefore have them at five, assuming a Missouri would be in them. You know, I mean, they're not voting on Missouri. But what the bottom line is, is that Kentucky and South Carolina are getting more votes than Tennessee, which in this scenario would be number six, and then Vandy didn't get any votes, they'd be last place, which they usually are picked to finish. So anyway, hmm, a lot of experience, 17 starters returning for Tennessee, but coaches, the SIDs, maybe not. And it, a lot of it, I think, is the stock that the Tennessee name has fallen. I really do. And I think a lot of these, you know, when you see the uh, where teams are voted and all this, there is some stock in the name. Uh, Southern California, for instance. Nebraska. Now, you know, they got Adrian Martinez as a quarterback, so maybe they deserve to be nationally ranked or the first team and the others receiving votes. I'll give you that, but what have they done lately? Okay, but Martinez is there. All right. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad selection to take Nebraska number 25 or number 24 or wherever. But, yeah, you start wondering, is a South Carolina, is a Oklahoma State, is a Florida State, is an Appalachian State, which got more votes for the top 25 coaches poll than did Tennessee, were they going on their brand names? Hmm. Something to think about. Anyway, that's the kid. Now, I did mention a story regarding Mike Leach and the Tennessee Volunteers, and it is downright Shakespearean. Yes, you heard me, and I'm not exaggerating, because Mike Leach has compared his 2017 talks with the Tennessee Volunteers to a Shakespearean play. Uh, of course, you remember what was happening. John Curry was trying to lure 
uh, Mike Leach to become the coach after everybody else turned him down. Leach would have been the most charismatic coach in the SEC. He would have been, you know, you've got this great passing game innovator. They were going to meet, presumably in Los Angeles, the cell phone, the, or the emails that Curry had. Uh, basically couldn't stay in touch for a few hours, and he got canned. And Phil Fulmer, who has been known to move in on other people before to get career advancement, then became the athletic director, said, I don't want Mike Leach, heck, that would steal the spotlight from me. And he hired Jeremy Pruitt, a.k.a. Coach Dull, who would never steal the spotlight away from Phil, Phil Fulmer. So that was, you remember that is, and Leach compared this to a Shakespearean play on the Paul Feinbaum show yesterday. He gave an account of how things went down. He did confirm that Curry and he met in L.A. while on a recruiting trip for Washington State, actually, and states that he didn't have any intention of flying to meet Curry. That's kind of interesting. Didn't really end up anywhere because I'm very happy at Washington State. Of course, he's going to say that. They said, will you be willing to talk? He said, sure, I'm in L.A. recruiting after the dialogue because I wasn't going to meet somewhere. This whole fly somewhere and meet somewhere probably wasn't going to do that because I was happy here. So I said, look, I'm in L.A., just come and see me. I'll be happy to talk to him. Leach, who is quite the orator, I think that's pretty well known, launched into a description of the events that followed in a way that would only he could. The chaos in Knoxville... It's like a Shakespearean play. Shortly after that, there was the coup de tat at the University of Tennessee, as it was, said Leach. You can call it what you want. I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings at Tennessee, but it's a fact. It was like something out of Shakespeare. All of a sudden, they call him from the AD, and en route, they, route him, they run him off. Then the king, or the chancellor, who orders the offing of the AD... Because the guards are around and demanding that it be done in order to secure a position. Very interesting. Very appropriate. Very smart. Sort of like Apollo Creed picking a fight, right? Yeah. Shortly after that, they off the president. Then they off the very chancellor who set it all in motion, allegedly. There was a whole power shift. Hopefully, the ground for the good people at Tennessee is more stable now. That's telling it like it is, Mike Leach. And boy, it would have been a whole lot more fun. It would have been a whole lot more exciting. And I got to think a whole lot more successful if he was aboard in Tennessee. You know, it wouldn't hurt to have the most charismatic coach in the national fo in the national football league, excuse me, in college football, coach coaching the Tennessee Volunteers. Not at all. I'm Marky e. Bilson. When we come back, bottom of the hour, by the way, talking to Tom Shanahan about his book Ray of Light. We talk college football there. The NFL they rank their top players in the. In the uh, in their game came out on NFL Network yesterday. A surprise to maybe a, a, to a lot of people, I think, on who was number one. I'll tell you all about it when we return. It is Tri Cities Sports Now. Coy County Prevention.